Hey there, and welcome to Speak English with Christina, where you'll have fun becoming fluent in American English. I'm your English coach, Christina, and this month we're having fun with real spoken American English. Maybe you can understand my regular videos and other videos for learning English, but in fast conversations in the real world, it's harder for you. So, all this month, I'm going to challenge you with special videos featuring real, fast American English. Let's go! The audio and video extracts in today's episode are from my new course, Understand Real American English. You'll see, it helps you decode fast spoken English and feel comfortable in real conversations. Plus, the course is available now until the end of June, and details are in the show notes below. Now, you already know that spoken English, what you hear, it can be very different from what you read. And a good very small example of this is the letter T. Now, sometimes it sounds like a T, but sometimes it sounds like, well, listen to this example and tell me what sound you hear. In a small little town for a NATO base in Germany. Let's listen again with the subtitles this time, and you see the letter T but what sound do you hear? Listen. In a small little town for a NATO base in Germany. In a small little town for a NATO base in Germany. And by the way, that was my old friend from college, Colleen, talking about her life as the daughter of a military officer. When she was a kid, she lived in lots of different places in Europe. Lucky her. And she says a small little town, but the T in little sounds like little, little. And it's the same thing with NATO. It sounds like NATO, NATO with a D sound. And if you're wondering, NATO stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So Colleen lived on a NATO base in Germany. We'll see a short extract from my conversation with Colleen, and then we'll zoom on some specific parts. But for now, just listen to the extract, and don't worry if you don't catch everything. There are no subtitles for now, because, well, real life doesn't have subtitles, and we're working to train your ear, but the full transcript is available at ChristinaRobofay.com. Now, let's watch this video. Okay, yeah, so like you had been to Spain before, but as a kid. Yes, and then you don't like appreciate it when you're that yeah. little. You're just like, whatever. Yeah, right. You're just like, yeah, I just live here, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. And so like, where all where all did you go? Um, oh, wow. Like, when you were over there? Um, France. Uh-huh. Of course, Germany. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's where you live. Yes. Yeah. Well, I lived in Germany and then I moved to across the border because it's like right on the border of the Netherlands. I'm sorry. And then I lived in Maastricht for two years. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, okay. So France, Germany. I traveled to Italy, uh -huh. I traveled to Hungary, I traveled to uh, Czech Republic, yeah. and then, oh, I did a Mediterranean cruise, so sorry, uh, where we stopped in Greece, uh -huh. and Malta, right. and Ephesus, Turkey. Okay, right. so um, you so, went like all around. Yeah, pretty much. Like, like I said, don't worry if you didn't catch everything. We're going to look at it together. And when you join the Understand Real American English course, you'll improve your listening skills to understand more conversations like this. Yeah. 
listen to the phrase twice without subtitles and see one if you can understand it and two if you can hear the D sound where you would read a T. Listen. I travel to Italy. Uh -huh. I travel to Italy. Uh -huh. Okay. Now let's see it and hear it. I travel to Italy. Uh -huh. I travel to Italy. Uh -huh. So we don't say Italy, but Italy. Italy. Now, let's hear this in the context of the conversation. Okay, yeah, so like you had been to Spain before, but as a kid. Yes, and then you don't like appreciate it when you're that yeah. little. You're just like, whatever. Yeah, right, you're just like, <laughs> oh, I just live here, so whatever, yeah, right. And so like, where all where all did you go um, oh, wow. like when you were over there? Um, France, uh -huh. of course Germany. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you lived. Yes. Yeah. Well, I lived in Germany and then I moved to across the border because it's like right on the border of the Netherlands. I'm sorry. And then I lived in Maastricht for two years. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, sorry. Um, okay. So France, Germany. I traveled to Italy. Uh -huh. I traveled to Hungary. I traveled to uh, Czech Republic. Yeah. And then, oh, I did a Mediterranean cruise, yeah, so sorry, um, where we stopped in Greece uh -huh. and yeah. Malta right. and Ephesus, Turkey. Okay, right. so um, you so, went like all around. Yeah, pretty much. Listen to a specific phrase twice, no subtitles. Can you understand it? But they're pretty good at making the difference. But they're pretty good at making the difference. Now let's see the subtitles and hear it. And notice how I pronounce pretty like it's spelled with a D instead of a T, like pretty. Let's listen. But they're pretty good at making the difference. But they're pretty good at making the difference. Hmm. All right, here's that extract of our conversation, but with the subtitles. And for the context, uh, we're talking about the lack of anti-Americanism in Europe. Listen and watch the conversation. Like, okay, so let's see if you if you can remember. Let's see what what did you like about France? Um, well, I liked it because the people were nice. Uh huh. Yeah. And like in America, like some people were like, "Oh, the French hate Americans." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. From my experience, they were super nice yeah. to me, especially right. when I was like, where am I? Yeah. They were like, do you need help? And I was like, sure. Yeah. And, and like, well, I think maybe like, people don't like American foreign policy or like American government policy, but they're pretty good at making the difference between like the official stuff and then like the, the people who are just True. people and they're traveling, so they want to discover your country. And, right. Yeah. Okay. So what about um, Italy? And for vocabulary, pretty good means very good. And we often use pretty as an adverb in front of an adjective to mean either very or fairly, just a little. For example, it's pretty hard to understand real American English, but you're improving already. It'd be easy if you could learn that T sounds like D and that it would be true all of the time, but sorry, this is English and the rules are a little bit crazy. But with the course Understand Real American English, you'll get the transcripts to all of the videos and full video lessons where we go through the sounds so you can train your ear. Here's a little rule. The T is pronounced D when it's between two vowel sounds, like with Italy and NATO, but also when the T comes after an R and before a vowel sound, like with pretty and gritty, for example, but also in words like city. Now, what about you? When you hear Americans talk, have you ever noticed this flap T sound? And could you understand it? 
or did you misunderstand? And it's okay to not understand. That's why you're here to learn to understand real spoken English. And if you want to be able to understand more videos like this one, join my online course Understand Real American English, available until the end of June 2018. Thanks to 10 unscripted dialogues, complete lessons, plus worksheets, you'll learn to decode real conversations between fast-talking Americans. Just click the image below to learn more about the course and how to join before we close the doors at the end of the month. So thanks for watching Speak English with Christina and I'll see you next time.